<laughs> Welcome to Village in Motion this Tuesday, December 31st, the last day of the year. I hope you've had a great year, and whether you have or not, I hope you'd like to talk about wine and spirits, or at least learn about them, because that's what we're going to be doing here. I have in the studio with me today two wine and spirits experts. I have Jason Healy, who is our Director of Dining Services, and Jason, it's good to have you with us as always. Thank you. And I have Jim Coulter, who is our wine connoisseur. Uh, and he can tell us all about wine, and we're glad to have Jim with us again as well. Glad to be here. Glad to have you both. Thank you. This has been a heck of a year. Yeah. And Jason, you have really had the knowledge about wine and spirits. You've managed a, a wine store in the past, a beverage store in the mm -hmm. past. Uh, and since you've been the director, you've done a lot with the wine and spirit program. Yes, uh, we've uh, added, you've seen some different happy hours, you've seen the the portfolio of wines and beers that we carry on campus mm -hmm. increase. Um, we're always looking for new and different things, so o always let us know what you're looking for. Um, and I did bring actually some sparkling and champagnes that yes. we do carry right. uh, on campus, and I'm just going to show everyone at home uh, some very simple basic cocktails you sounds, can make uh, that are great. great for New Year's Eve. Sounds great. And so, so we're going to, to make them. We will not drink them on air. I, I will not drink them on air. You, you all can do whatever you choose to do. I, got, um, I want to get an early start on yeah, tonight. It, it, hey. I understand. Um, but uh, as we have here, we have uh, an actual classic uh, French champagne. which mm -hmm. comes from the Champagne region. Uh, this is a California sparkling, uh, which goes through the same process. It's just not from that area right. of France, so we can't call it a champagne. Uh, over here, I have two Proseccos. Uh, this one in particular, uh, is the one I'm going to use today. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice Italian Prosecco. It's a DOC. Um, it, uh, it's a nice balance of sweetness. Uh, mm -hmm. It has a nice bubbles. Um, and those are, you know, things that I look for. It's also one of those um, sparkling wines that is good by itself, um, but it's not to the level of a, uh, a really true champagne oh, okay. or kind of higher in sparkling right. where I wouldn't recommend... Um, Mixing it with anything, mm. I would drink. I would drink it by itself. Um, so let me see. I did not bring a knife, but they do build in these nice little you know, the well, twisters. Yeah. Well, the little foil oh, yeah. to okay. take off. Um, so a couple things is when you're opening, never put your face over top of the bottle. Right. Um, I learned that not personally the hard way, uh, but I did work with someone who, uh, in the middle of opening a bottle. Did look directly over it. Ooh. Cork shot up, mm. broke her glasses right in the middle. Uh, it was very dangerous to so be very careful. Yes. So what I typically do is I'll put a finger on top, stand away, and then unscrew off to the side there. And unscrew it all the way out. Yep. And then what I will also do is when I'm opening, I will cover with a cloth off to the side. And I kind of slowly. Yeah, but make sure you have a firm grip on it. Firm grip on it. Other thing too is you do want to get that cork away and this coming out now. Uh, so some people will pop and then almost kind of recover. Mm -hmm. You do kind of want that, that smog, I call it smog, but you want that effervescence to get out. Right. That does affect the wine. So the first one uh, I'm going to show everyone is one that I I think it was the first champagne cocktail I learned, and it's a classic champagne oh, okay. cocktail. So you take your glass, take a sugar cube, mm -hmm. drop it in the glass, and then you take bitters, ah. um, which uh, if you make uh, Old Fashions or Manhattans, mm -hmm. you'd add a little bit of that. This adds uh, a little bit of um, herbal um, flavor, and then it also kind of counterbalances the sugar which does change the flavor mm -hmm. of the uh, the champagne, um, and then slowly pour. Because one of the things is one, you always kind of want to pour about half a glass, mm -hmm. and then let it die down if you want to add more. One of the things with this drink in particular is, while the sugar cube sits, that's why I actually like using a sugar cube instead of uh, granulated sugar, is it will slowly dissolve into the drink. Okay. It adds to it, but that also. Um, kind of recharges the uh, effervescence of it and the bubbles will keep coming. So there is a very basic and simple one. One of the things too that I do a lot during the holiday season 
um, is um, for garnishing. Like this drink by itself is nice, mm -hmm. um, but since it doesn't necessarily change the flavor pro pro sorry, profile, sometimes I'll just add some whole cranberries, oh, just okay. to add a little color to the drink if that's what you like. Um, the next drink that I'll show everyone. Yeah, and one of the things I noticed you did is as you poured the champagne in, you tilted the glass. Yeah. So I, I do that um, with champagne. Um, but the funny thing is, if I actually pour a beer into yeah, a glass, right. I pour it actually kind of hard, huh. about half a beer. To and get I a big actually head, huh? get a big head, but you also want to get all that carbonation out because mm. um, the champagne itself will release it. Mm -hmm. But beer, when you actually drink it, right. it's sitting in your stomach. And then as you're adding things, then you're getting that, that, um, that the bubbles, bubbly. the bubbly is there. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the other ones is I think everyone really knows uh, mimosas, which are fantastic and great. Um, but if you want something uh, at night, which is not necessarily as sweet, um, what I will end up doing is making kind of the same thing, uh, you know, juice and sparkling. But I use cranberry juice. Yeah, because mimosas have orange, orange juice. juice in it. And yeah. orange juice prices are going up. Yes, yes they are. Um, you know, always depending on season and weather, but with the cranberry, um, what I like knee high. is um, it has a nice color to it. Right. The cranberry, if you don't get a cranberry juice that is all sugar, um, it actually gets a little bit of a tartness to it that counterbalances with the sweetness of okay. the wine. And once again, just because I have them, throw a couple cranberries in and it kind of adds a nice little little drink. And that's um, a very festive color for yeah, the holidays. Kind of, too. Kind of looks like a rosé wine. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like a Cure Royale if you yeah. add more cranberries. Correct. Juice. You yeah, could add more cranberries. Less alcohol. Yep. And if you were doing mimosa, you would have orange juice versus cranberry juice. Absolutely. And really any juice with your preference, you right. can mix and yeah. see how it works out. Prune the, juice, Clint. The Prune juice. <laughs> I haven't done that one, but uh, you know, it, it might be a good way to bring in the new year. Um, so the last one I'm going to show you is more of a cocktail, mm -hmm. which we add sparkling to. So what I'm going to end up doing is, now you can do this depending on how you like your drink, okay. um, in a shaker uh, with ice, and what you would end up adding is, this is simple syrup, so mm -hmm. it's just a combination of sugar right. uh, and water, so it adds sweetness to it. And then we're going to balance that out with tartness from uh, fresh lemon juice. So we're going to add a little bit of that into it. And then to kind of give it a kick, um, we add gin. Oh, now, okay. gin is classical, and this is a uh, uh, French 75. Um, okay. And so the classic recipe is gin. Um, I can tell you people do modify it, and we'll use a, uh, a silver or a light rum. Uh, if you're not a gin fan, mm -hmm. um, and then the last piece that I end up doing is I take a lemon twist, right. and then I will actually twist it around the top of the glass to get kind of the around zest. The rim. Mm -hmm. And then I'll kind of curl it up and drop it in because I want the sparkling to actually hit the lemon oh, uh, okay. to get a little bit of flavor and nice drink. A little bit more of a punch to bring in the new mm -hmm. year. Um, but yeah, overall, a lot of things that you can make uh, with uh, Prosecco, sparkling wines, uh, even champagnes, if that's your preference. And, yes, Jim. The uh, French 75 <clears throat> that mm -hmm. you have there, could you, for example, use vodka or some other, uh, some other liquor to yeah. give, it, give it the same punch? Uh, yeah, you yeah. could. I, I really think... Um, you know, uh, typically, like I said, people do gin, which has a very right. distinct yeah, profile. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, it's whatever you right. really like. Right. Uh, so if you're... If you don't have gin, but you got a whole closet full of bourbon or vodka, sure. you can... Sure, yeah. you can try it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about experimenting. Sometimes that's yeah. how you get the, the best combinations. Yeah, right. And also, we can get non-alcoholic drinks also. Yes. Sure. Uh, all could, of these could, could be yeah. made with uh, non-alcoholic uh, sparkling. Mm -hmm. And then um, even what I would do is with the French 75, if you want a version of that, right. uh, do the lemon juice, do the simple syrup uh, in the lemon itself, but just don't add any uh, alcohol. Alcohol. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's, it's uh, drinks for anyone and sure. everyone. Yep. Uh, in regards to it. Even give the kids the non-alcoholic one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh, and the Prosecco would run how much? Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, um, but it's, it's in that, it's probably under that 10 to $15 yeah, range. It's, the Prosecco, usually, 
most of the Prosecos that you, that you see in the grocery stores or, or liquor stores, at least around mm -hmm. this area, would be anywhere from the seven to twelve or thirteen dollar range. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cava's a uh, couple of dollars more, uh, mm -hmm. you, but most places you can get proseccos for six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, okay. and get a cava yeah, for eight ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for for a holiday you can you can mm -hmm. have a party and have a the whole case of right. liquor for I mean, wine for not to that a much. Champagne. Right. Yeah, uh, just because it's such a specific region, uh, right. there's such a limitation on it. Uh, and at the end of the day, too, there's kind of that prestige around it. Mm. So um, not taking away from anything from Champagne. Champagne's delicious, and uh, I really enjoy it. But when you're looking at value for price paid, there's right. a lot of good wines out there. They're just coming from different parts, whether right. it's in California, Spain, Italy. Um, there's all different types. So they're using the pretty much the same grapes in the mm -hmm. same process. It's just because of the region that it comes out okay. of. But, Jim, what's prices run on uh, Champagne? Champagne? Probably you're going to start around twenty to twenty-five dollars okay. and go up from there. Yeah. And the other the other thing about not using champagne for these drinks is that champagne has its own distinctive t taste mm. profile and and historical reference right. point, right. which is one reason that it comes from a very limited area. Mm -hmm. The problem with mixing it with stuff is you lose some of the champagne-ish right. character to it, which is what you're paying forty or fifty dollars a bottle for. Right. Prosecco or California wine, or actually any American sparkling wine, uh, would be a lot less expensive, and you'd be tasting the gin or the mm -hmm. vodka or whatever yeah. you're whatever you're going to mix with it. Orange, even orange juice, okay. dilutes the flavor of the champagne. Yeah. It works better with it less expensive. And if you don't want a champagne, you buy sparkling wine, right? Yep, absolutely. And or sparkling water. A sparkling that water. Yeah. 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 Okay. That would work as well. The yeah. bubbles the bubbles are almost as important as the as the taste. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very interesting though, you know, Jason, as you were saying about getting the, the bubbles out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because otherwise they're gonna be inside. They they are gonna be inside, especially it, it adds. But as you can see the drinks here, this one is is, is kind of slowed down a little mm -hmm. bit, but because of that sugar cube, you're still right. seeing that that effervescence, that carbonation, effervescence right. coming out. Okay. Uh Anything that we should be aware of with these drinks? Any issues that, that we need to be aware of? Other than the fact, don't drink too much, don't yeah, drink and dry. Yeah. Well, the French 75 would be a lot more alcoholic. Yeah. Okay. Than the, I mean, if you're, if you're using a 80 proof liquor mm -hmm. instead of fruit juice, or e even if sure. you're using a less powerful, you know, after dinner liqueur or something, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, that, would be, that would be the key thing. Uh, Interesting, the French 75 is named after a famous piece of artillery from the pre-First pre World War and World War One because the drink packs a punch, ah. which is why they named it the French 75. <laughs> yeah, it does. One of the other things is, Jason, I don't know how many people know about bitters and, and just what mm. bitters are. Bitters uh, is great. Um, it's, um, it is such a large concentration of different herbs that are put together, and it is alcoholic. It's actually very strong in alcohol. Mm. So. It's 44.7%. Uh, Pretty high. So uh, <laughs> you're looking at almost like 90 proof if yes. you think about that way. So this is actually stronger in alcohol than this. Right. The thing is, this uh, gin, we would use like an ounce, ounce and a half. Right. Where bitters, you're just using some drops for flavoring. Um, but it's a digestive. It's great. Um, I like it a lot. Um, even um, as a you know young, young person working mm. in, in restaurants and bars, right. when that was the first thing. If you ever got an upset stomach, they would just give you ginger ale with a little bit of bitters in it, oh, and it helps to digest the process. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So people then can actually use it for something that's healthy, not just something for, for yeah. entertainment or yeah. to get high. Yeah, really at the, at the point of it, because you use so little in cocktails or if you, you have it by itself, <clears throat> it, it does, I mean, it is alcoholic, but it, um, it, is, it is very herbal. Mm. It has very, you know, uh, notes to it. Um, it adds uh, obviously bitters. Right. Uh, it adds a bitter quality, and sometimes you want that in a balance. Um, okay. So I haven't used it a lot when I cook. Um, if, you know, I typically get bitter uh, from different herbs, right. uh, fresh herbs or dried. I haven't used bitters, but um, really for alcoholic um, drinks, it works great. It adds a different texture to it, okay. uh, and that's where you'll see a lot of times bitters added with like. You know, in like in an old-fashioned way, you're taking sugar, you have bitters to balance it out, mm -hmm. and also the cherry and the uh, orange are very sweet. Mm. Um, so you want something to counterbalance that. Okay. Speaking of cherries and oranges, 
uh, and cranberries. Mm -hmm. uh, should be fresh? Um, for a garnish, yeah, I recommend fresh. Um, cherries, um, you can use the jar, you know, the manichino cherries okay. that people really love. Um, oranges and things of that nature, yeah, you want to be fresh and, and using that. Same thing with lemon. Okay. You want to make sure that you're using nice fresh fruit. Um, you know, same thing with cooking or anything is if you don't like it by itself or you don't think it's good, mm -hmm. it's not going to become magical in, in a drink. Uh, you know, I used to tell people when they would find like the worst wine and like, oh, I'm just going to cook with it. Right. I mean, you're still eating it, like you're mm -hmm. still tasting it. Uh, so always make sure you're using something good. One of the things too um, is I think champagne and sparklings kind of get a bad rap mm -hmm. of only being for celebrations or only being for certain times of the year. Right. Uh, they're great to pair with food. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times, you know, you get uh, a different dimension of it because like you said, you have the effervescence which adds to the aroma, it adds to the mouthfeel, it, it's, it's, it adds a different dynamic mm -hmm. um, to the experience. So I, I always say play around. If you find one that you like, figure out what it would go well with. Um, you know, typically just like white wines, we go, you know, poultry or, or fish, but mm -hmm. it, uh, it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a great wine to put in your arsenal, if you will. Okay. You should always have a couple of bottles of sparkling wine mm. under the bed or in the closet or <laughs> buy, buy a couple each month and have them for a special occasion okay. like a Sunday dinner right. or uh, you know somebody's got a birthday or something. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that, uh, that I found is that uh, the Cava or mm -hmm. California right. Champagne uh, both are great to keep around, and as I said, between for you know ten or twelve dollars, basically the same price as a right. bottle of, of still wine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice. It's nice to have as an occasion. Uh, my sister was here last week for mm -hmm. Christmas, and we had the bottle of sparkling wine oh, with, our, nice. with our dinner yeah, in the yeah. dining room. So I mean, it was a, you know, it's it's a nice celebrate. And by the time you get through Christmas, New Year's, Easter, Fourth of July, right. Labor Day. You, you, could, you, can, you can figure out a way to justify one bottle of uh, sparkling wine every month for the year. Yeah. With, with all of this, um, one of the things that you haven't mentioned is the temperature of the, of the cobbles mm. and, and of the drinks um, in regards to it. So uh, I like it chilled but not too, too cold okay. um, because I think that does affect the flavor. Uh, if for some reason you're drinking something or... Um, typically, if I'm mixing it, I actually will have it a little bit colder. Um, and speaking of cold, uh, two tricks, because it is New Year's Eve, right. and for some reason, I would not use this for a sparkling or anything with uh, carbonation in mm -hmm. it, but if you have a still wine that mm -hmm. you want to chill down, a uh, little, little trick is you can take either a paper towel or a uh, kitchen towel, yep. wet it, wrap it around, Put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes, and oh. you will have a great chilled bottle of wine. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't do it. And make sure you don't leave it more than 10 minutes, right? Yeah, then you're just going to have an icicle. <laughs> um, that's a good way. And then if you're outdoors, or what I do um, with the um, sparklings is I will get kind of a larger bucket, do two-thirds water to okay. one-third ice, but then add, I use kosher salt, but you right. can use any kind of larger salt, and it really will drop the temperature, right. and it will chill faster if you are in a hurry. Okay. And if you're not in a hurry, mm -hmm. um, put it in the ice box for half an hour or an hour. Okay. Uh, it, 55 degrees is mostly the places you'll see temperature okay. recommended. So you, half an hour, 45 minutes in the refrigerator will get it down right about there. Okay. So people who are seeing the show this morning, mm -hmm. uh, they haven't it's gotten not, It's not too late to put a bottle in. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. And yeah. if they haven't re uh, acquired a bottle, the stores are open. Uh, and they can go and grab a bottle and still chill it. Yeah. Do you okay. sell any of these in the dining room? Uh, yes. Um, actually, all of these come from the dining room, so you could purchase those. I know this Prosecco in particular, um, we bought uh, mainly for retail purposes. So okay. uh, I would check out Woodland Skies for that. Okay. Um, one of the other things, too, is if, uh, you know, for New Year's Eve, you have half a bottle mm -hmm. uh, and uh Something I do too is if you don't have a, a professional sealer, right. uh, literally putting a spoon in will help keep the uh, the carbonation in. And then uh, next morning, great for mimosas. Wonderful, yeah. very very good. Well, Jason, this has been most educational uh, in regards to it. Jim, you um, 
really have a lot of stuff on, yeah. on wines. Don't I you? Had, well, I had one thing I wanted to mention about opening sparkling wines. Have you got the wire cage that was, uh, that, was that was on this? Here you go. Because because what I learned was when you're when you're opening the sparkling wine, mm -hmm. and I, well, I learned this at a winery in France, so maybe they didn't know what they were talking about. But for opening the, opening the champagne, the Putting the towel over it is a, is a great idea because mm -hmm. that way, if the if the cork does fly right. out, mm -hmm. the, it'll get caught in the towel. But what they what they told me they they recommend is to after you've loosened the wire cage, to leave it on the cork, mm. and oh, then a, a put the, and put the towel over it, and then it helps you hold oh, okay. onto the cork. Oh, okay. And the other the other trick was which I, I saw you doing Ooh. was to turn the bottle, not the cork, cork. Yeah. Yes. because the because the cork is made out of cork, and the it can break the neck. Easily. The neck, yeah, is narrow, the narrowest part, and it can break. And you do not want to be trying to corkscrew yeah, right, uh, right. that out of the bottle, as I did one time. Mm. Yeah, it's not, not fun. fun. My my sister-in-law had a better way of doing it. Uh, she bought her husband an army saber, and he learned how to saber the neck <laughs> off of a bottle, which is very dramatic, yeah. but right. messy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And if you if you're not into these kinds of things, what about wines for this evening? Well, any any kind of wine is good. Okay. Uh, if you're if you're having a, a glass of wine in your apartment at, at midnight, uh, I recommend a sparkling mm -hmm. wine. But you can do the same thing with red or white, whatever kind of wine you like, whatever you have. Uh, and there's really no hard and fast rule. If you're going, my wife and I will be having little canapes mm -hmm. and so forth. Then we'll start about 11 o'clock and okay. finish up at 12:04. Go to bed, but uh, the secret is to choose your food and wine pairings so that they mm -hmm. complement right. one another. Yeah, right. Don't don't have uh, sardines and red <laughs> wine or something. But the but there's but there's lots of stuff you can do. Right. And a lump of cheese and a bottle of wine is a great way to celebrate anything. Right. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. You also uh, have gone to a lot of wineries around here. I mean, yes. Thinking about the year coming up, we have about three minutes left. Good, because what I want to say is that it's time to make your New Year's resolution yes. tonight. And a good New Year's resolution is if, if you're watching this show and you're still interested in wine, uh, a great way to learn about wine, which I've learned a lot about myself, is by going to wineries, go to tastings, mm -hmm. Listen to what the guy says as they're pouring, the, or the woman, right. as they're pouring the wine. Ask questions. A lot of wineries offer tours where they'll take you around the property and show you how the wine right. is made, which lends a lot to your knowledge of wine. There's, uh, I, brought, I brought a list of them. I don't have time to read them all. But if, but if you go up to Leesburg, there's 15 or more wineries around Leesburg. Middleburg, there's about 15. And a lot of them, there's Virginia offers a great uh, virginiawine.org is the website. Right. You can get a map that shows you where all the wineries are, gives you the information about their hours, right. phone numbers, websites. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great way to enjoy. Take, take your kids, take your grandkids if they're mm -hmm. old enough. Take your great grandkids if they're not old enough, but because they can still listen to the stories about how wine is mm -hmm. made and get them interested in it. It's an uh, it's, uh, educational process. Fermentation, right. hops, yeast, barley. There's distilleries, brew pubs, breweries. Mm -hmm. Lots of places you can go to learn about this without having to sit down and read a big heavy book right. or a nice light one on your iPad or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm happy with, the, with all the trips we took because mm -hmm. we are good, good friends, good food, good wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know special trips here runs an occasional trip out to Potomac Point or Stone Tower yeah, or something, but there's one, but, one a yeah. month. But it's but it's the kind of thing that you and your right. friends and family can hop in the car some weekend or take a couple of days off from work and take your kids and their kids right. go someplace and pack a picnic lunch. Gotcha. It's a great way to great way to spend the spring and the early summer before it gets too hot. And, and Jason, are we mm -hmm. going to be having any wine pairings here? We, uh, we will. One of the things actually to, to talk about wineries is one of the things that we want to be doing uh, next year, probably wait till the weather gets a little bit warmer, right. um, is when we know there's going to be a special trip to a winery uh, on campus, we will actually want to have that winery come in to oh, one of our nice. restaurants to kind of do a sampling. Uh, we'll have our <coughs> chef for that restaurant kind of pair 
um, uh, special that week with one okay. of their wines, and, and we'll sell it retail. But um, I think it gives people sometimes the, the ability to try something, be like, oh, I really like this one particular wine they right. had. Let me take a special trip out to the vineyard and, and see what else they have. Uh, right. The other thing that I would add to that is it is great to bring kids or grandkids to the winery, and, and they're usually out in the country. It's a nice, nice right. environment. Uh, a lot of them, and I would check ahead of time, a lot of them are actually dog friendly. Oh. Uh, so um, uh, I don't bring my dog uh, mm -hmm. just because he is 100 pounds and um, I don't want to deal with that in public. Right. But uh, I have been to many that have uh, great mm -hmm. uh, dogs that will come and outside mm -hmm. and uh, with the kids. So it's, it's a great experience. Yeah. So I really do recommend that. But always check before you. Always check. It's not 100%. Right. Uh, so everyone, they're different. Um, the other thing um, be, would be, like you said, wine pairings. We're going to be looking at ways throughout the year to incorporate wine and different uh, drinks uh, to pair with our specials. That would really be great. Mm -hmm. uh, any recommendations that you would have that we carry here at Green Spring? Uh, that we do carry, um, you know, for the most part, especially if you're just looking for a still wine, uh, our house wine is great. So. Okay. Um, you know, I would recommend getting a bottle from one of the restaurants. You can take that home with you. Like I said, this Prosecco in particular uh, is very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know Woodland has it. I uh, don't believe any of the other restaurants brought any in or they okay. might be sold out. Uh, so I would check that out. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it's kind of like you said, it's, it's really pairing uh, with what you like and trying new things too. Yep. Yeah, that's good. How that's about good. the bistro? Would they have that at the bistro? Um, I know Woodland bought a lot of wine just for retail. Um, bistro, I would have to double check on. Okay. Well, you mentioned the fact of house wines. Mm -hmm. Okay. That you would recommend. What's what's what is the house wine? Uh, the well, we we have our, our one basic uh, wine which we carry in all our venues, and that's you can get your Cab Merlot and all that. Right. Um, it's a California based. Um, it goes over very well. Okay. We, we're 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 a big fan of it, um, but we're always looking to if we need to switch up if mm -hmm. someone's finding out something different. Um, we're always looking to get the best wine for the best value for our residents. Sounds great. Okay. Well, Jim, Jason, thank you both. Right. This has been wonderful. Hopefully everybody's learned something. Hopefully everybody will be safe tonight. Yeah. They'll drink sensibly and they will not drive. Uh, no. You know, no. Walk, no. walk home from the restaurant. Walk home from walk, the restaurant. Walk home from the restaurant. Another okay. good reason to eat on campus. There yeah. you, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And to drink on campus. Drink on campus. In, in yeah. regards to it. But I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful New Year's Eve. Yes. Uh, and has a wonderful New Year's coming up. Uh, folks, we're looking forward to, to 2020 and I hope you are too. Uh, remember, uh, we are now at 1960, and uh, if you can't find us there, you can always see us on uh, YouTube, and you can see our retapes, our, our videos at 10, 12, uh, live at 10, video at 12, 4, 7, and 10 uh, every day that the uh, show is on. Again, Monday through Friday, watch us, okay, and have a wonderful, wonderful New Year's. Thank you for joining us in 2019.